All right, hey guys, how's it going? It is Monday, November 7th, and it is another Road to 2800 video slash stream. I'm doing this live today. I've got a little time this afternoon, and I thought, why not include you guys on the Road to 2800? I've been having a lot of fun with the streams lately, even though I haven't been doing that many videos of late, just been really busy in October and November. But I always like to get in a stream with you guys. It's fun to interact with you, the viewers. So I hope everyone's doing well. As I said, I am on the road to 2800 bullet on chess.com. I've been looking to reach that mark for quite a while, but I haven't put in the games necessary to actually reach that uh, coveted number, let's say. So hopefully today I can make some progress on that road. I think I'm currently 2675. I actually tried to record one of these videos about a week, maybe a week and a half ago, and my screen capturing software was not cooperating. So I played four games against this guy, Master Leif, and I split the games. My connection was really bad, so I just stopped it. Uh, so not much damage though. I think I lost a few rating points, nothing special. Hopefully we can get back over 2700 today. Who's in the chat this fine afternoon slash evening? How's it going? Peter Court, Matthew, Tuber Game, Yali Eliat, Darush, Hickam, Kevin, Ryan, Muhammad, Rick, Hera, Kerry. Good to see everyone. First thing I wanted to say, by the way, because I have a lot of U.S. viewers, tomorrow is election day, Tuesday, November 8th. And regardless of who you're voting for, Go out and actually vote. Don't just sit at home. Don't sit this election out. It's very important to do your civic duty. I've already voted. I early voted uh, by mail, uh, like, I think like a week and a half ago or so. So I got that out of the way, and I hope you do the same, regardless of who you're voting for. How's it going, Alexander? Mark? Never Interpreter? Christian? Jared? Mysterious Labyrinth? Nick? The... Kai, although I think I always say your name wrong. <laughs> How's the audio sounding? Everything good? Good to go? We have 166, 176 people watching. Awesome to see. I'm going to fire up a game. So I'm playing Bullet. Probably going to stick to one minute, although technically Bullet can be even longer. And you can play with an increment, like two minutes with a one second increment. But let's see what is brewing as far as one minute opposition right now. This is a game I'm just observing at the moment. Let's see, we've got Georg Meyer. Maybe I can challenge him. That would be a nice opponent to play. Let's see if he's interested in playing a game. Georg Meyer sitting at 20, 2863 bullet. And we also have KNVB, I am KNVB, which I think is Amon Hamilton, one of the chess bras. I will challenge him as well. Let's see if he's willing to play. So I've got challenges out to both of those guys. I'm also going to challenge Gulamali Rises, a FIDE master. I believe that's uh, Kazem Gulamali, an FM from Georgia, the state, not the country. Very good bug house player. Let's challenge GM Murphy as well. Hmm, he's not taking challenges. Chess King Dreamer, how about you? I'm pretty much just going down the list of the top bullet players who are online right now and available to play. Quintiliano R is another guy I'm challenging. Now I'm getting down to like the 2400s. Just looking for a game to start out. Oh, why not? Let's challenge my friend Keaton as well, Keaton Kira. That'll be fun too. Why, thank you, Rick. I would not recommend waiting, race, wasting your vote writing me in as president, <laughs> even though that would massage my ego slightly. Don't do it. For one thing, I'm not old enough. Let's see if Georg Meyer wants to play. I was hoping I'd get a game against him, but not looking like it at the moment. And we got the fire emojis in chat. Another thing I wanted to say before we get started, thank you to all of those who tuned in or watched the archive of the match against Grandmaster Simon Williams. I had a ton of positive feedback. Actually, both Simon and I had a ton of positive feedback on our respective videos. It was a great match. If you happen to miss it, go watch it. It was just back and forth the whole time. Roller coaster of emotions, wild games, 
tons of mistakes from both sides. It was not the type of perfect chess. If you were looking for high level chess action, that was probably not my best rivals slash dual commentary, but we made it happen. All the games were exciting and I was pleased with a couple of the games, the, the last game in particular. So just go watch it if you haven't already. I have no idea who that is, Sumit Singh, but I hope that's a compliment. Hello, Challenger. And Johan, shout out to you as well, one of my early subscribers. Yeah, Simon and I definitely will play again. He travels quite a bit, and I'll be traveling a bit coming up too. Like, I'll be in London for two weeks in December, but no doubt we're going to play again. Maybe we'll even make it a regular thing as far as the chess rivals go. Yeah, excitement was the key. If we had the same type of style, it might not be as interesting as it was. Well, it certainly would not have been as interesting as it was. He was slippery. Simon was just great at coming up with resources and keeping the pressure on throughout the entirety of the match. I actually think he played a bit too fast. I think he was amped up as well because I had time pressure issues the entirety of the match. And there were a few moments where if he had taken a bit extra, I have a feeling he could have found the resource or the move that might have put me away or saved a bad position. But both of us missed chances for sure. The, as I said last time, the luck cuts both ways. There were a couple games that I think I should have won, one game in particular, and for sure he missed some chances as well. Okay, still looking for a game here. I'm going to send out a few more challenges. And actually, why not? Let's just issue an open challenge as well. Just put out a regular old seek. For a random opponent. Let's say we'll make it someone who's at least 400 points, within 400 points of me or so. Still might not get a game this way, but we'll try. Mm, cannot create more than five seeks. That's a problem. Thank you, Robin. Do you think Magnus is going to play the Boring Berlin in the World Championship? That's a great question because Karyakin is an E4 player. Yes, I think we could see a Berlin or two. It's hard to tell because Magnus is such an expert in choosing openings. He does a good job of averting his opponent's preparation. He's got great psychological insight into openings. But I think a Berlin would be a safe bet. Do you think that you need to stop streaming in order to improve your skills to become a grandmaster? No, I don't think so. I think theoretically, if I were training diligently to become a GM, streaming wouldn't affect it too much. In fact, it might be of help because as you've seen on these streams, I do get to play great players. Uh, playing grandmasters from time to time, especially in these dual commentaries, is excellent practice. So I think I could keep that up. John, are you working on any new repertoires for Chessable, says Silohead. Not at the moment. I have some ideas in mind, but I'm not actively working on some comprehensive repertoire. I am making some Rook Endgame videos for that Rook Endgame repertoire, just trying to flesh out some of the existing repertoires. But I am thankful that there are a lot of players who are adding repertoires to the site. And in fact, uh, last month, you probably saw I did this video on Christoph Selecki's Benko Gambit repertoire, which has been awesome. I think he's had 300 people, uh, over 300 people now, purchase that repertoire, which is great to see. So we're getting some high quality content on the site. Some GMs have published repertoires too. This Grandmaster Alex Cholovich recently published a Scandinavian repertoire, uh, a simple Scandinavian repertoire that is nothing super comprehensive, but he's looking to do more. Still looking for a game here.
I'm going to cancel some of the existing seeks so I can challenge some new people. The ideal scenario is someone someone is ready and waiting, possibly even watching this stream, <laughs> and wants to play some bullet games. But you never know on short notice. Oh, okay, we've got a taker, I think. All right, first game of the day against the third Doctor, 2294. A game we got to win. So he's playing some weird Alakine's defense where he put the knight back on g8. And I'm going to take that, of course. I'm not going to trade queens. I want to put my knight on c3. Let's try to get this knight into d6. He's not going to let us, of course, but I can try. Let's go here. I'm trying to make it difficult for him to free himself. Let's play a3. Bring this rook over. Maybe b4 to come. Uh, all right. So he's weakening his king side. I wonder if he's actually going to castle queen side. Regardless, I'm going to send this knight into d6. He can win this pawn, but I'm not worried about that. Actually, when I take here, if he takes on g3, I get to take with the f pawn and open up the attack right on f7. You see everything converging there? Let's play this move. So now I'm hitting the rook and f7, and I think I'm just crashing through. He's not going to survive this. Beautiful knight planted on d6, assisting in the attack. Yeah, this is lights out for black. Rook takes with checkmate next move, regardless of whether he takes or plays king g8. Okay, let's rematch him. We did get two points in that game. Just getting loose here. Thanks for the offer, Z, Steven. <laughs> he says, I'll play you, but I'm only 1,800. Thanks for tuning in, Jilly Wibble. Sean and Stefan asks, where have you been lately, John? Yeah, I've just been busy throughout October and November. I tend to get busier as we get closer to the holidays. I was traveling a little bit. I was in Las Vegas for four days for uh, my buddy's bachelor party. So that was a bit of a distraction. I've also been teaching a lot. I'm trying to get back to my roots, which is chess teaching, really. The reality is posting a video every day or even every other day, it's hard work. And I did that for quite a while, like a year and a half at least. But it's a ton of effort. So I don't know if I'll be able to keep that up in the long term. I try to post as much as I can, but this is still very much just a, a hobby for me, kind of a, a side interest. And I want to make it bigger and better, but I have to be mindful of how often I post too. I was thinking back the other day, when I first started on YouTube, I was posting three videos per day. I was posting a standard video, a blitz video, and a bullet video every single day. And I don't know how long I kept that up. Probably not more than maybe maybe six months maximum. But there was a time where I was just like busting my butt trying to post all the time. And it was great for the viewers. And I built up a lot of viewers that way and everyone seemed to enjoy the content. But <laughs> looking back on that, and also I was working full time and just busy 24 seven, I don't know how I did it. Now that I'm getting slightly older, I just hit the big 3-0 recently. I gotta pace myself. <laughs> Yeah, Vegas was a fun time, Andy Motor. It was a good time. Nobody lost their shirt or ended up in prison in our group, so I'll consider that a success. Let's put out another seek. Try to find an opponent or two as well via the prime. Ooh, this guy. Okay, this is a player who might be willing to play. I am Machaic92. Okay, think chess, 2672. All right, Team Scandy, let's do this. Get those fire emojis going in the chat, guys. Let's bring the heat. Probably knight there. Yeah, let's play knight a6, just defending this guy. Bring the bishop out. Uh, let's play bishop d7. I don't mind so much if he takes on a6. I think that's okay for me if he does. If he castles queenside, I'm going to put this knight in on b4. Attack this pawn. Maybe bishop c4 is a good reply, though. Yeah. I uh, gotta be a little bit careful. Okay, I'm gonna put this knight on h6. This looks unorthodox and possibly just bad. But we'll see. Time is of the essence. Let's do this. And we'll play f6. You can always take here and mess up my structure, though, is the thing. 
Okay, we're going to take that. So we had to surrender the bishop pair. I am attacking f2, however, so that's a nice little perk. My knight is currently dominated. I need to fix this. I need to maybe play g5, something along those lines. Okay, now we're getting some activity. Maybe the knight coming to f5 soon. Let's do this. can take on h6 if he wants. Mm, yeah, that might have been a bad move by me. I'm going to try to get rook e2 going. If I can get rook e2 in, I've got chances. He's defending well, though. Hmm, let's pull this back and pin. Aha, yeah, that's that's not good. <laughs> that's not good what just happened there. Whoops, I meant to play bishop e3. That was a mouse slip. Okay, I'm going to resign this game. This one's hopeless. Rematch this player. I think I was un too unorthodox with knight h6 and knight a6 combined. Those moves did not combine well together. So good game, think chess. I'm playing more e4 lately, so that's what I went to in this one. Let's play knight orf. Mainline knight orf. Hmm. I don't think this is a good setup for black, but we'll find out. Okay, let's just play bishop e2. Nice and easy. Hmm. Play g3. Probably going to castle king side. Let's pull this back. I had to be mindful of queen a5 ideas. Let's bring this here. Targeting f7. Looking for c3 possibly as well. Let's castle. So if he takes, he's not going to take. But if he had, I was ready to take back. Hmm. Okay, let's go here. He still can't castle because he would lose f7 if he did. Let's give a check. Put this here. Let's hide our king. Maybe e4. e4 might be a good move to open things up. If ever I get the chance. I think I can take that. Hmm. D -d 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 I'm going to bring this back. Look to double up if he takes. Does not, though. Okay, so now I'm going after f7 pretty hard. Also, queen d6 might be an idea. Like, if knight d8, I have queen d6 threatening mate on e7. Hmm. It's an interesting one. Okay, I'm going to take. I know he can take on h5 here, but I feel like with his open king, I must have some chances. Check. I'm trying to get at that king. Ah, queen e4. Okay. A bit annoying. I'm not going to trade. Ooh, this is risky, though. Not trading when I'm down like this. Put the rook on g3 soon, if I can. Uh-oh. Queen takes f5. Rook d3. Yeah, that's going to win my queen. Ooh, nice defense by him. Nice tactical defense. Knight d4 was a move that caught me off guard. Maybe it's a good move. Let me offer a rematch here before I analyze. But yeah, knight d4, that severed the connection between my rook on d7 and the queen on d1. And I played rook takes f7, but that allows the capture on h5, so I'm not sure. Okay, let's go for a Sicilian this game. This will be good, because we're, we're pretty close in rating. This player, clearly a good player. Let's play knight f6, looking for bishop b4 next move. This is a good line in the con. You get pressure against c3. Wow, that already? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take that. White was probably losing at least a pawn there, so I can understand their decision to play that. Let's bring this out. Put the knight on h5. Hmm. I'm going to take this way. Try to get d5 in. Looks like a good advance to achieve. It's castle. Hmm. Uh, I'm just going to go here. Knight f4. Probably a move I'm going to try to get in soon. Let's do it now. Take the file with the rook. Knight e2 would be nice, but his bishop is covering that square, so we can't do that yet. Now I am threatening knight e2. Hmm. Let's do this. Support the knight. Um, let's take. Play here. Just trying to keep him tied down. Admittedly, it's a little tricky, though. It's a bit tricky. Let's play the queen up. Hmm. Yeah, I lost that. That was not good. Take this guy. Now I gotta start playing fast. Whoa, he just drops that. Okay, and he resigned. 
lucky for me because he was escaping there at the end. He managed to trade queens. I did not capitalize as I, sh I probably should have when his king was on g1. Yeah, he's just stuck right here. Rook on h1. Terrible position for white, but I did not capitalize. Let's offer the rematch. Someone asked, what are my streaming schedules? I do not have one. I just kind of stream ad hoc. Someday I may have a more defined streaming schedule, though. You never know. So now we've transposed into a Sveshnikov. Black plays d6. This player plays some weird lines. Queen a5 is not a normal move there at all. So let's go here. Guess he's going to go bishop c5, maybe? He does that. Okay. So next, I think I'm going to deliver a check on d6 and just see where that black king goes. All right. Ah, queen takes b2. Yikes. <laughs> this is bad. I'm playing some sloppy chess already here, guys. This is not good. I'm going to sack that rook and hope for the best. I kind of want to sack the other rook, honestly. Because my position is pretty bad otherwise. Let's try this. This might be an immortal. It might be a really bad game. So I'm threatening bishop takes c6, though. Now I've got queen e7 made in mind. Yeah, so he has to run. Check. Let's take here. Check. Uh-huh. Let's check like that. And h4. How about that? Threatening to win the rook. It might not be enough, though. He can offer a trade of queens. That's annoying. I'm going to go here. Yeah, okay. I think I botched this. <laughs> I maybe should have taken the draw. Probably should have. Let's hide the king now. Look for f4 very soon. Ah, rook b3, winning the queen. Or queen takes f6, check even. Both are good. Yeah, okay. Should have settled for the draw after sacrificing both my rooks. Don't know that I have checkmate here. I've got a lot of pieces around his king. It almost looks like I should, but that was risky. But I could force a draw here with queen f6 check, king f8, queen e7, etc. But what's the fun in that in a one-minute game? <laughs> Next game. Why not take rook with pawn? Would have been check, then run away with queen. Rook with pawn. In which position? Oh, you mean right here. Yeah, so if I play h takes g5 right here, he gets to play queen takes g5, and then he's able to trade queens. That was the issue I was trying to avoid. And I'm down material in the end game, even though he doesn't have his pieces out. He's got issues, or I have issues, because I have no pieces left. So I was trying to figure out some other move here other than h takes g5, but I didn't come up with anything good. My bishop's under attack as well. I suspect that this position might just be losing. Unless I have queen d6 or something along those lines. I think this player left, so let's look for another one. So rating took a bit of a hit there, but still early. Sean Sweens, you are watching my road to 2800. I'm trying to reach 2800 bullet on chess.com. This is the sixth part in the series. So you can follow along as I attempt to reach that rating. Uh, let's play the bishop out here. We've transposed into a pan out variation, actually. Let's pull this bishop back. Don't want to give up the bishop for the knight, unless I have a good reason to do so. Uh, let's take here. I like my knight on d5 now. That's a strong piece. He probably should try to trade it off, as he's doing right there. Next, I'm going to try to get this rook over to d8. But okay, we're entering an endgame. Probably one of the rooks will come to this file. Makes a lot of sense. I'm just going to bring my king a little bit closer. He's going to put his rook in. Let's guard d7. And I think this is okay to do. If he takes, I take with a rook. Rook c7. I should be better in that endgame. So no worries there. Let's go here and try to get the rook over to d8. I've got slightly the better pawn structure, so I'm liking my chances in this static position. Now I'm attacking e3 and b3, so we pick up this pawn. b2 is extremely weak as well. Let's pull this back. I'm going to start marching my queenside pawns now. Let's start with this one. I'm not sure he should have played g4, because that weakens h3. So if ever he moves this bishop, he runs into issues. He's probably going to play h4 now. Yeah, so this is what I mean. This pawn falls. 
He can play Rook here, but I'm not sure that helps him much. Let's bring this over. If he checks, I can play Bishop C7. So no worries there. Ooh, I got to watch my time, though. Let's give a check like that. I'm dropping pawns, though. Not good. Let's try to get that in. We're going to sneak that pawn by. Ooh, now he can't stop me from queening. All right, so we win that one. Shaky technique, but we got the victory. Let's continue with the e4 train. Now I'm going to play the King's Indian attack. Actually, this is the line I meant to play against Simon, but he never actually went in for it. He did not let me go in for uh, the white side of the French, so I didn't get the opportunity to. Some players were asking why in that match against Simon I didn't play uh, d4, e6, and then e4, transposing into a French. And the answer is you can't get into a King's Indian attack from that move order, so that's why I didn't do it. This is a bizarre position. He's attacking f2 pretty strongly, but hmm. Take, take, take. Let's go here. I'm going to try to attack down the e-file. I'd like to play e takes d5 under optimal circumstances. Um, hmm. Let's play e5 now. Change it up a little bit. He could put his bishop on a6, so that's annoying. Let's bring this knight around. I'm using a lot of time explaining what I was doing against the ginger GM. <laughs> All right, try to target c6. Let's bring this over. Looking at d7. I feel like I have a good position here. Let's just defend that pawn. He's being very annoying, though. As he well should be. We're going to go after that pawn. Oh, f2 is guarded, thankfully. Um, let's go here. Now I'm going to try to get g5 in. His rook was just hanging, and I didn't notice it. Check. Nope. Okay, e6. Let's go here. You can get one of my rooks next. But I think this position is still good for me. Whoa. Whoa. Checkmate. All right, so we get the mate with knight takes g6 right at the end. Crazy one, though. He had pressure against f2. I don't think I should have put my rook on d1 so early. Yeah, when I play this move in particular, I'm losing a defender of f2. So with his bishop and then his knight being able to point at f2, I think he had some chances. Also, bishop a6 was a move I always had to keep track of. That player left. Let's look for a new challenge. Yeah, there is a bit of a delay between the game if you're following the game live on chess.com and the stream. Tazio, FM Tazio is the next opponent. Let's play g6 against his d4 opening. And we'll play c5. We'll strike at that center pawn. He's going to take, actually. Interesting. Let's see if he tries to defend it somehow. Well, I can do this and then play queen a5 when he takes back, and we smoothly recapture. Let's play d6. I don't play these structures so much, but I'm going to do my best. Let's play b6. Let's go for a double fianchetto. Target that e4 pawn. Let's see if he really wants to push e5. Looks like he does. Okay, let's go here. So if this knight moves, I might be able to take on d4 favorably. Let's do that. If he takes, I've got a mate threat on g2. Probably queen e4 is what he'll do. He does. Let's go here. If bishop e3, I have f5. That's a nifty move. Let's pin him. I'd like to induce him to play this somehow. I don't think he will, though, willingly. Let's take that. Now if he takes with the knight, I actually get an e5. So I think he has to take with a pawn, which is not a move you want to play if you're white. Okay, we're going to go here. So we are definitely better in this position. I've got the better pawn structure. I'm going to push that pawn to a3 because that looks annoying in the long run for white. Now I think I'm going to crawl forward with my kingside pawns. So try to get this move in at some point. Let's do this. I don't need to take. Next I'm going to go for trying to get an f5. If he had refused to cooperate there, I was going to try to get an f5. Now he might go knight e3 and push d5. He may do that. Hmm. Okay, I'm still going to take. Let's give a check here. And I guess I gotta defend my b4 pawn, huh? Okay, let's play this. Uh, f4, f4, I missed. Yikes. Extolling my brilliant technique, and now I run into this. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that's a good move by him. 
check. Oh yeah, I'm going to get mated on h7, but nothing to do. Ooh, nice game, Tazio. Mm. I feel like I should have been able to do something there, but he just played fast. My technique was too long-winded. Okay, let's play this. And we're going to go c4. I wonder if I can try to squeeze him in the center with this d5 move. Let's just play knight c3 now. It's a somewhat suspicious opening by black. Maybe he's all right, though. Let's go bishop g5. If bishop e7, I can take and then win d6, hopefully. Hmm. Let's see what to do here. Let's go like that. Not sure how good this is, though. Let's take. You can take b2, for instance. Uh, let's take. Threatening queen takes f7, by the way. Now he's got to play queen e6, yeah. Okay, so this should be a pretty good semi-end game. Yeah, I can try to get a rook into d7, like so. Attack his bishop, attack b7. He's loose all over the place. Bishop takes c6, now a threat. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just play this in the simplest way possible. Just banking a pawn. And he's got a poor structure still. So it's hard for him to do much here. Let's go like this. Now I'm going to bring my king up to d3. Like so. Target the c6 pawn. And try to crawl forward, basically. Can probably go f4 somewhere. Let's just keep advancing, though, so long as he's letting me. Play like that. Keep pushing these pawns. They are connected. Keep pushing. Might as well. Let's bring this guy over. And a6. Okay, so this game went really well. We are going to win, barring a disaster. Let's just take that. If I can prove that I know how to checkmate up an obscene amount of material. So that one went well when I got rook d7 in. Once I was able to achieve that move, I think my position started looking good. Okay, I'm going to play the Gurganidze variation of the Karo Khan. And he's letting me play d5 unopposed, which I got to believe is good for me. Um, let's play knight here. Maybe stick the knight in on e4 if given the chance. Now I'm going to go for a minority attack, b5, b4. Not a strategy you usually get to play in this line, but hey, I was afforded the opportunity, so I'll take it. Let's do that. And I'll play e6. Might play bishop a3. Yeah, that was attacking my rook on f8. I'd say this position is about equal. I don't know that I should have just allowed knight e5 right there. That was probably a little lax on my part. I'm going to go here, try to trade off that knight. Yeah, I don't like that opportunity that I just gave him. Hmm, let's go here. Guess we'll take. So now I'm at least attacking. Ooh, nice tactic. Nice tactic by him. Does it work, though? So I do have this move. I guess he has knight f6 check if he wants. I should take, and then take here, and then take on c3 at the very end. I have a couple back rank issues, though, don't I? This pawn on f6 is annoying. Let's play e5. And then if I can get d4 in after this and try to eliminate this pawn, I'm looking good. I'm looking very healthy. Yeah, so he's going to probably correctly try to destroy my pawn structure. And he can take d7 now, or take g6. Decline to do both. Bishop takes h3. Ooh, okay. Let's try to trade a pair of rooks. Now we're going to advance. Uh, let's go here. Okay. Okay, now we're trading off the last pawn. I do have rook versus bishop, though. In a position that's actually a little tough for him. Now he loses the bishop. Let's see if I can checkmate with this amount of time. Hopefully I can. 
This is a pretty elementary checkmate. All right, and I won on time. <laughs> so I benefited from having the rook against the bishop right there. Not sure I'll be gaining a lot of rating points in this match because this guy is giving me quite the, the pushback at 24.58. But I'll do my best. Ooh, that was a mouse slip on his part. Yeah, he meant to play B takes C6, of course. And he says LOL in the chat. <laughs> That's just part of bullet. You hate to see that. Don't like to win like that, but those are the breaks. Okay, now we're going for some sort of Accelerated dragon type position again, similar to the one we got earlier, actually. Uh, let's play bishop d7. I'm going to pull my queen back. I'm not completely sure about the position of the queen there. Let's play this. Last time he went for a quick e5. He tried to organize e5 when he played this way. So let's see if he does the same. Play queen c8. Go a6 here. Uh-huh. Let's play b5. He might go a4 and re reply to that, but... Does not. Maybe with my bishop on d7, that wasn't a good idea for him. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Okay, let's play bishop e6. Play this back. Not quite sure how to handle this, but maybe knight into c4 now? Looks like a decent plan. Hmm. Let's play e5, changing up the pawn structure. Can I take here? I think I can. He takes on c4 with the knight. I have knight takes c3. Ah, but that move order I didn't consider. Yikes. Okay, so I got to do this, I guess. This is not so good, though. I'm going to get two pawns for it. Mm, maybe he can take there. Let's try to expand, make something happen. His rook is not completely hanging. Ooh, inviting knight g5 was probably not, probably not smart there. Let's bring this back. Uh, bishop takes h6. <laughs> it's going to get ugly if he plays that. Guess I have rookie five, maybe. Let's do that. Bring this over next. I still have flagging chances. I think I can still hope to flag him, perhaps. He's playing slower than I am. Mm hmm. Check. All right, we're going to win his queen now. Go attack that bishop. Push this guy next. Take that. Okay. Somehow I blitzkrieged him and won that game. Messy, messy game, but we're up to 2673. Another Sicilian coming up here. Let's play bishop d3 again in this position. He's going to play the correct move. Let's play knight d2. Now I'm going to fianchetto this dark square bishop. I think this is how... I'm supposed to handle this position. Put the bishop on b2. Let's bring this rook all the way over. Put the king over here. Seems wise. I like the c4 square from my knight. I don't think he should have gave that to me. Next, I'm going to put this bishop on d2 where I'm targeting a5 at all times. So make sure his rook can't really move. Uh, let's take here now. See if he... Whoa. I don't know why I did that. That was... A complete miscalculation on my part. I thought a5 was hanging. Don't ask me why. <laughs> All right. So what do we have now? I have a rook against two miners. Can I take there? No, probably not. That's the type of mistake you sometimes see. A bishop g4 would be a good move right now. That could have trapped my queen. Luckily, he didn't see it. Ooh, now we get this in. He can't take it because a queen takes. That would be a disaster for him. So let's go here. Uh, rook takes g7 would have been good there. That would have been strong. Let's play d6. He still can't take it. Uh-huh. Let's switch targets now. Now I'm going to run this a-pawn next, I think. It looks like a good plan. Go here. Mm-hmm. Okay, after all that, we're equal material. Ooh, but I went a pawn. Good stuff, good stuff. Let's get this up here. Uh-huh, let's take. Ooh, sneaky. Oh, <laughs> so sneaky. Oh, I could have checked right there. 
That would have been good. Didn't have the time to figure it out. We got him. Don't want to stalemate him. Definitely don't want to stalemate. Let's just cut him off. Advance this. He should advance his pawn, so at least he has stalemate opportunities. I almost took on g7 in that position where he played the rook to the second rank right here. King g4. Instead of taking the pawn on b3, that's a very typical bullet trick. Because I'm assuming he's going to play rook takes b3. So you can understand why I might pre-move rook takes g7. Fortunately, I did not pre-move rook takes g7. Because if I had after rook d2, then he would have played rook takes g2 and won the game. Picked up my rook. Let's get back in there. Mr. Tazio from Spain. Let's play d5 this time around. Not sure I'm getting great positions out of g6 on move one. Let's play this. I wonder if he's going to take that pawn. He doesn't seem completely willing to do so, but he might in the future. Just put the bishop on f5. Bishop's outside the chain. Got to watch out for knight e5 ideas, so I'm going to play this way. Put the queen here. e6. Bishop out. I think he might regret this early queen move. I just have a feeling. Doesn't seem like the best thing to do, because you can see now he loses some tempi. Let's keep pushing with b4. Minority attack idea, right? Let's take that guy. Go here. Flip the queen over. Bishop a3, kind of hounding that rook. Doesn't have a lot of squares for that guy. Well, he's going to sack the exchange. Okay, so put the rook back over here. Hmm. I'm going to go f6 just to deny him the e5 square. I know that's a bit weakening, but I think I can get away with it. I think it's fine. Bishop b5 maybe. Nope. Not yet, at least. Let's play a4. This looks irritating to him. And a3. I'm going to stick that pawn on a3, just like I did in one of the earlier games. Hopefully that pays off in the future. Let's go here. Hmm. I'm trying to get something going, uh, especially against a2. This is a strong bishop. I like that piece. Let's take... So now always this A pawn is going to be a nice asset for us. I don't think he has much in the way of an attack either. A rook patrols the seventh rank, so he can't get, you know, even if he got in queen g4, let's say, it's not going to do much damage. Let's just play that. The pawn's coming. Knight c2 should be fine. Yeah, hitting the queen. Uh, I'll go take that guy. Still not really worried about any of his threats over here. We're queening with check now. Let's take like that, take that, and we're going to get the queen trade in. Okay, he resigned. Rematch. Should I stick with e4? I'm going to see what he plays against knight f3 on move one. Not completely sure what he does against this, but we'll find out. Could get a terash. We do get a terash. Let's play this. Hmm. That's a weird move. Okay, h3. Yeah, not sure about that move he's playing. Bishop g4 as opposed to just taking on c5. Let's play a3. I'm going to try to play b4 and defend that c5 pawn. He says no. But now, this strikes me as a difficult pawn for him to win back. d5 is constantly weak as well. Okay, this maybe. And perhaps... Hmm. Knight b6. Yeah, that's the move. Attack the rook. Attack d5. That's got to be it. Uh, except I didn't see that I lose that, but maybe it won't matter. I guess he has knight c3 here. Again, he's sacking the exchange, interestingly. Let's take d5. Looks good. Let's take this, this bishop. Okay, so I didn't win any material out of that. That's regrettable, but hey, it happens. Can he take on g4? He's not going to try it. Let's go here. Mm, he might be able to play rook takes e5. Didn't try it. Tricky, tricky position. Let's keep going with the attack. I want to get at f7 if I can. Can he do that? Okay, well, let's take and play the rook in. Attack f7. Hmm. Take that guy. Take that guy too. Okay, now we're going to rush with the h-pawn. Oh boy, that, 
that was not good what I just did there. He's got plenty of time too. Oh no. Didn't want to do that one. I wanted to do queen d4 instead there. Okay, now I might actually have a draw. Thing is, I have no time. Ah, ooh, lost that one. Hmm. <laughs> he got in rook e8, and I just didn't respond to the attack on my, my rook. That was a lapse right there. I didn't think he would play that move for some reason. I thought he was just going to move his rook back along the 8th rank. I should have traded and then probably played h6, in which case he might be in Zugzwang soon, right? Because I'm threatening queen g7 mate, unless he has some sort of perpetual. But I think I actually escaped the checks pretty quick. So that was looking good. Let's offer the rematch. 6-2. to two. How's everyone doing? Trying my best. He's got this annoying knight bd2 line, which I don't think is very good, but... In a bullet game, it could cause some problems. Just play a6 again. See if he's willing to take here. He is not. Because basically, I think that knight is misplaced. You can see he's spending a lot of time maneuvering it. Let's play the knight up here. Knight a4 is looking good. Next. Pressure c3 and b2. Let's play this. If I could get an a5 followed by b4, that would be great. Let's do this. Takes with the bishop. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to pull this back. Maybe knight b6 to c4 is something I'll think about in the future. Or even try to eliminate that knight. Hmm. It's actually a little hard to move here for both of us. Because we both need to stay guarding our b-pawns. Is the thing. I'm going to try to give up control of the c-file for now in hopes of attacking that, which he did not respond to. Okay, that was a big mistake on his part. He did not even blink when I played that. Okay, b2 is coming next. Let's just take that guy. Take that guy too. Play f5, solidify. A knight c3 could be played at any time here. Let's go here. Let's check on this back rank. Checkmate. There we go. Okay. So I had to figure out some sort of plan in that one. When we both had rooks on the C file, but our B pawns were, me were weak, I couldn't quite figure out a way forward. So eventually I decided on that plan of putting the bishop on D6, bringing the queen to E7 to attack B4. Don't know if, how great it is, but that's what I went for. I'm going to send a couple more challenges too. I'm not sure. This guy might want to play again. No, he does. Okay. Let's go back to E4. We're going to play this way, just see what he does. Plays the knight out. Okay, so I was able to move order him slightly. Knight db5, try to get into a Sveshnikov. I think a3 is the move here. Aha, this line. I remember this line. Been a while since I played this way. Bishop h5, knight, a, knight f4. I think this is all theory. Let's go here. Hmm. I'm going to take the file with the rook. He does want a queen trade. Let's pull this back. So I think with uh, the two bishops, white can hope for a bit of an advantage. Especially now in the endgame, I think that pawn is likely to be weak. Doesn't look like he, he can hold it for too long. Knight d5 only does so much. Let's go here. I think this should be all right. Bring our king up, attack this pawn. Ah, but I lose that. I didn't see that. Can I trap him somehow, though? Uh, I don't think so. I think I just have to take. He's checking me around for no apparent reason. <laughs> All right, so now I've got a majority on the king side. Can I do anything with it? I'm going to mess up his pawns, first of all. Take that. Threatening rookie eight mate, actually. Let's 
Let's try to get our king up into a nice dominating position. Bush the c-pawn. Okay, now I'm corralling his knight. See how that worked out? We're going to go after this g-pawn over here. Go take that guy. Okay. Go win this. Just cut his king off. And go checkmate. Semi-instructed bullet game in that particular opening. Because in that line, white does get the two bishops. He did get the pawn back once I was able to win it, so I'm not quite sure I like my technique, but I'll take it. So again, he chooses this early queen a4 operation. I'm still going to go for a6 and b5, which always seems to be the answer. Uh, let's play h6 this time, just so whenever he does that maneuver, I don't have to worry. Let's go here. I kind of want to go for a5 next, so let's play that like that. Possibly even double up or triple up on the a file. He's just content to maneuver right now. You know what? I'm going to sack on b4. He's going to be facing an avalanche of pawns. So I think this sack is sound. c3 doesn't quite work due to rook c1. c3 now. Yeah, c3 now looks good. Actually, his queen is on the verge of being trapped. If that knight moves, I have c2. c2 is a threat even here. He might have to play rook f1. Plays that instead. That's probably a good decision. Let's go here. I wonder if he can take that and defend it. He's not going to risk it. All right, so I'm up a pawn. Let's hide the king. This looks like a good trade. His knight is going to have issues. Uh, let's push. B pawn's rolling. B2 next move. And if he takes, that rook is overloaded. He's trying to defend both his knight. Okay, so now we can take this guy. Maybe his best bet was bishop takes b5 somewhere around there. He didn't play it, though. Let's go for a tarash again. He seems willing to go into this line. Okay, he's going to play this a little bit different this time around. So now we're in a reversed Benoni. Reverse Benoni. I'm going to play the knight up to e5. Let's go for this trade, and then bishop f4. I think a decent way of playing. Trade that. Let's play queen a4, hitting the c6 pawn. Hmm, play b3. Now a7 is also hanging. Dare I say I can take that. I'm going to try. He can't ever play rook a8, so let's just scurry back with our material now. He's got to pin his hopes on the center, I think. Let's do this. Hmm. Rook takes e5, not quite working. Okay, let's do that. And I'm going to come back out again. Come back. So I'm up a pawn. But he could maybe claim Banco Gambit style compensation. Probably a while before these pawns are relevant. But let's push the A pawn. Pushing the A pawn looks good for the moment. Go in, attack that knight. He's got to be careful where he puts that knight. B6 loses to C5. Uh huh. Hmm. I'm going to play this. I know he can take on A6 now, but. Let's try knight g5 after that. Knight g5 looks fun. Hitting f7. If he takes here, I take and then take e8. Okay, check. Check and then go here. If he goes to... Okay, yeah, now I'm going to take d7 and hit his rook at the same time. So he doesn't have time to take my knight. And I'm threatening queen takes h7 mate. So when I played knight g5, I went for tactics. Trying to exploit his temporary lack of coordination. I've got the double attack here. And there's still the tension. It's really annoying for your opponents when you play a move that is not a direct recapture. He just took me on a6. He would like for me to take back on a6 with my rook because that provides clarity in the position. So knight g5, on the other hand, now he's like, what do I do? Do I take a1? How do I defend f7? He's got to figure that all out in a flash. Not easy. Okay. Let's play knight f6 this time. Let's see what he does against this move. Followed by c5. We're just going to try to take over the center, because he's letting us. Next, I'm in a castle. Probably bishop g4 followed by e4 if allowed. Let's do a6. 
Oh, I like my center. I like my two bishops in my center now. e4 threatened, and he didn't respond to it. He's got to go h3 now and hope for the best. But this is not going to be fun for him because that knight is eternally pinned, right? Um, I can almost play queen f6. Uh, I can't, but <laughs> I would like to. Let's play here first. Try to go queen f5. He was covering the f6 square with his bishop. Does that work? Really? Knight e5 now? Oh, that's your idea. Okay. Ah, clever, clever, sir. Okay, I gotta play f6. Get rid of that threat. Okay, so his king is still quite open. And I hope I can exploit that fact. Let's play bishop d5. Just x-ray that queen. Now queen g4. Queen g4 is a monster threat. So how's he going to deal with that? Let's do this. Mm, those bishops are looking tasty along this diagonal. I think he's got to play rook takes d5 now. Yep. Probably has to move that knight. We're just going to play for the end game. So this end game is so, so nice. Let's try not to lose on time. F4 coming. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not play that, John. That was a terrible move. <laughs> Awful, awful move. Check next. Just terrible. Okay. I can't believe I did that. Just utterly cruising along and then that happens. <laughs> I'm going to let him take there because... Whoa, he didn't respond to that? That's remarkable. Okay, now I win, I think, if I can manage the time. Oh, knight f7. Check. Play a move. Oh, I won on time. <laughs> Rook e1. Awful. I saw right before I played that move, but it was too late that he was going to take it with his knight. Yeah, there's always a chance to come back in chess. So long as you have even just a lone king, there's always a chance for snailmate. Or with more pieces, there's a chance that your opponent blunders a rook like this. Could be blunder day. Certainly seeming, seeming like it at the moment. Okay, so another game against Tazio. Let's play c4 this time. I'm going to go for the same setup. Going directly for the Tarash. Bishop g2. Hmm. This move I faced recently. I forgot what to do. Let's castle. He can take on d4, but I think I'm going to win this d5 pawn back is the thing. Because e3 is coming. So white ends up taking on d5 anyways with probably a small advantage. Let's take here. Uh, I think I can take that guy. And go scurry back. So up a pawn. Looking good. Two bishops. Attacking f6. Uh, let's put the rook here. Queen g4 looks nasty. Hitting the knight. If he has to play g6, that looks objectionable. Let's go here, putting him in a pin this way. Gotta win this game. Uh, let's play h4. h5, just keep weakening him. I've been pushing my pawn to h6 a lot in this match. It seems to be working. Take on e5, nah. Just go queen h4. Go here. f4, how about f4? This knight moves, he loses the rook. So that looks bad for him. Hmm. Doesn't even take back. Okay, I think I should be up too much material. It's a little scary looking, just because his pieces are around my king. Let's guard against rook h3. Now I'm threatening bishop takes f6. He has knight g3 check if he wants. He's trying to swarm with his pieces, but I think it's just um, too little too late. Now I get a checkmate. Knight e8, take it. You see how that pawn on h6 turned out to be handy. That's such a, a useful attacking hook. Anytime you can establish that pawn deep in your opponent's territory, it helps when you're attacking in the middle game. It even helps when you're transitioning to end games because it's only two squares away from promotion. Another game here. Let's go back to g6. Just to mix it up. Play c6 again. Gurgen needs a variation. Let's put this here. 
don't think this is the best setup ever for black, but I'm playing it nonetheless. Bishop a6 I'm looking for. Try to trade and then go queen a6. This is usually what you want to do in this line. And he probably doesn't want a queen trade. Let's try to get this rook over here. So threatening d4. And he didn't respond to that. Let's take again. This is a little bit scary though. Oh, wow, I'm just getting killed. Knight g5. Ah, this is still winning for him. But um, yeah, he had knight g5 on the previous move. He's going to get it now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I sort of closed my eyes to what was happening on the king side there. That attack proceeded very fast. Queen back to c1. Mm. Yeah, this position is already sketchy for me. I can't afford to take on c3. I didn't realize how quick his queen and his knight were coordinating. Okay. So we go back down from that one. Let's play bishop d3 again. I'm going to go for that same setup that I played earlier when he played this variation. So put the queen on e2, play b3 and bishop b2. I think this is the right way to handle it. Play king h1. Hmm. Let's do that because it looks annoying. Go a4. Play h3. Thing is, I'm not sure how you treat the central tension. Fortunately, he just released it for me, but I'm still unsure what you do about that. Let's reposition this guy. I think I can take here now. Discovery on his bishop. Nice little tactic. Take here. Next I can go f4 after he moves the rook. f4 and e5. Um, do I want to? I think I'm going to. Technically, I'm not winning anything, though. Ah, I could have taken on d6. I can still take on d6 because I'm hitting his queen. Take here. He has check. Okay, no big deal. Let's do this, and then let's play bishop a6 after that. Threatening c8 queen. Uh, let's just do... Ooh, got to be careful. Let's do that. Because he had knight e2 if I queened and then picked up the piece. So I always have c8 here. I just have to keep that in mind. Uh, I don't think I need to. All right, let's queen now. I'm tired of <laughs> not being up a piece. Let's take that. Let's take here. Take that. Push this pawn. Go after his knight. Checkmate. Guard the h7 square. I might play a couple more games with this guy and then maybe try to find another opponent because I'm not gaining any rating points, really. I'm just getting nowhere rating-wise. We're having... I'm playing good games, but it would be nice to gain some rating points, too. Let's play c5 here. So he had to make a concession by putting his knight out on h4. Maybe I can exploit that somehow. Hmm, e5. e5 traps the bishop. Bishop has nowhere to go. He took away his flight square by playing e3. Yeah, so we're just winning a piece here. Mm -hmm. Let's play g6. Might win a pawn back. I guess I have to be okay with that. Let's play this. Take a2. Kind of greedy, but what the heck. Bring this back. Oh, mouse slip. <laughs> Meant to play rook d8. I'm blundering rooks via mouse slips. I actually still have a semi-reasonable position, as in I'm not immediately losing. d5 would be good there. Uh, that I mean, I can't recover from this, though. This is too much. Yeah, okay. Well, that's an unfortunate mouse slip, so I'm just going to tell this guy GG's. See if we can find another opponent. How's everyone doing? Yakov N. How about Yakov N? He might be willing to play. One second, guys. I'm going to turn my fan on. 
challenge issue to Yakov N. A very good blitz and bullet player. Close to my rating, I think, FIDE and USCF. How do you feel about Simon labeling you the robot? Asks Ross. It's all in good fun, I don't mind. John, do you ever consider multiple games with one person becomes more about adapting to playstyle rather than progress? Yes, when you're playing a match against someone, it's all about adjusting to how they're playing in that match. I mean, the objective quality of your moves matters more than anything, but it's also about adapting your openings, seeing what openings are working well. For instance, in the match with Simon Williams, I was playing D4 as white to start, but then he was playing the Dutch very well, and he had a little bit of a surprise up his sleeve with this Christmas tree variation, as he called it. And I wasn't getting good position, so I eventually switched to E4, and I got a very important win with E4, where I think the opening went well. I don't know if I'll reach 2700 tonight. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be streaming. Maybe for 20, 30 minutes more. So I went 13 and 4 against that player, but I don't think I gained any rating. I probably broke about even. This last game was just tragic. Rook slipped right over to e8. I was trying to put it on d8. And I also hung a rook with rook e1 at some point earlier. Play against GM Benjamin. GM Joel Benjamin. I think he's on ICC. I think he does a show for ICC. So I don't know that I would encounter him that much. Hey, Atrophy. Good to see you. What do you usually drink when you're playing chess? Iced coffee or espresso and water. Pretty basic. Like right now I'm drinking water. Hey, John, do you have a job or is it chess full time? Chess full time, Martin. I did already vote, magazine, and I was encouraging people right at the beginning of this stream, those who are in the US and eligible to vote in this election to vote tomorrow, or vote now, early voting, if you don't wanna mess around with potential lines tomorrow. John, will you re release info about the upcoming London Chess Classic? Yes, I will do that, Ryan. I'll mention it in some video. I mean, I might as well mention it now. So I'll be in London December 5th through the 17th. And the London Chess Classic itself, the FIDE Open, which I will be playing along with um, probably a lot of other familiar faces to you guys. I know Simon Williams is going to play. Probably some other streamers will be there. Uh, maybe maybe Triffin, King's Crusher might make the trip. You never know. Eric Hansen was there last year. So that, that tournament is December 9th through the 16th. And anyone is free to go and watch it. You might have to pay actually to get into the venue. I'm not completely sure about that because the FIDE Open is running alongside the main event, which is the London Chess Classic itself, featuring some very good players. I believe it's a rapid event. They changed it from a classical to a rapid event. I think they're keeping with that same format. I'm going to answer a few more questions, guys, but let me try to get a game here. Hopefully you guys are liking the action so far. Let's challenge GM Benolius. And GM Nuki. GM Nuki would be a good match if he's willing to play. Jay Landa, what's up? How about you? You want to play? GM Vitali Bernaditsky. Any chance of a dual commentary with G uh, I am Penguin GM1 in the near future? So that's my former student, International Master Andrew Tang from here in Minnesota. He is streaming now, so yeah, he might be open for a dual commentary in the future. I gotta ask Andrew about that. He's a little shy, so you never know if he's willing to do something like that, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm playing Grandmaster Bernadiski. Let's decline this pawn. I don't like accepting this gambit. So I'm just going to play a setup that I know I can play pretty quick. Let's see if he goes with something aggressive like castling queenside. He very well might. He does. Okay, let's put the queen on a5, attack this pawn. Play bishop e6, attack it again. I feel like I should castle here. I'm playing a lot of these Fianchetto setups, aren't I? Queen c4 looks mildly annoying. I guess I'd have to go knight d8 in that case. Or d5, d5 might be all right. 
I'm trying to push myself outside the comfort zone, outside of my comfort zone as much as possible with my opening choices, even in bullet, looking to mix it up, challenge myself. Seems like he might have some connection issues. Let's play this. Ooh, um, yeah, e6 is kind of a problem, is it not? Oh, but I can take on c3. That was my brilliant plan. My brilliant plan was to do this. I'm not even sure it works, but considering he has 12 seconds left, he can play knight b3 here. I'm threatening queen b2 or queen a1. Most importantly, queen b2. So he's got to move his knight to defend. Uh, all right, let's just take this back. Yeah, my opponent clearly having some connection issues there. So that is unfortunate. Let's challenge some more players. How's it going, Jay Wiseman? Wow, 500 plus viewers right now. Hope everyone's Monday is going well or has gone well. And congrats, Johnny, you did. You finally caught a stream live. Also a reminder that the World Championship, if you have not heard, is coming up very soon. It starts on November 11th, I believe. So starting this week. Thanks, James. Has John ever played Eric Hansen? Yes, I have played Eric twice over the board, but it's been at least seven or eight years, I would say, since we last played. I think our last game was in Canada at the Canadian Open 2008, and it was a draw. I think we've drawn twice. And I was higher rated on both occasions, so my expectation probably should have been positive against a young Eric Hansen, against a young Chespera, but... I believe our games were drawn on both occasions. I want to say we played in Philadelphia another time at some sort of tournament, maybe World Open or National Chess Congress, something like that. You know, I don't have plans to visit the World Championship atrophied. I'm still kind of thinking about it if I might go last minute. Considering that I'd like to do videos on the match, I have to do one or the other. Life is about choices, right? So as of now, I'm not attending the World Championship in person, but you never know. Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karyakin, Christopher. Thanks, Skylar. Glad you like the channel. Firing off a few more challenges. I don't want to go too far down. Once I get down to 23 or 2400s, there's almost no way I'm gaining rating points. Ideally, I'd have an opponent like that very first one that I played, that Think Chess guy. That was a good opponent. Unfortunately, I didn't do well against him, but for rating purposes, he was a good opponent. Still awaiting the Starbucks sponsorship. <laughs> I need a Starbucks rep to get in touch with me. Maybe I need to start tagging them in more posts on Twitter and stuff. They've been fueling my dual commentary victories. Yeah, I'm trying FR Craft. Trying to find some games. I think, uh, is KNVB playing? Yeah, Amon is playing. I'd like to play him, but he might be playing viewers. Yeah, it looks like he's playing a significantly lower rated player. So he might not be up to it for now. Ah, uh, yeah. He's playing the Material Odds Challenge on chess.com slash TV. We'll just watch him for a second.
Do you ever play Snakes and Ladders? Is that like Shoots and Ladders? I played that when I was a kid. All right, we got the same Grandmaster as before. Let's play E, well, I'm, I was gonna say, let's play E4 against him, but let's play E3 on move one instead. And we're gonna play a bird. <laughs> How about that? C4 attacking the Rook on A4. Ooh, and he blundered the Rook. I will gladly take that. All right, so lucky us. We play E3 on move one and we're instantly up an entire Rook. He can play knight d3, but maybe I just do this and look to swap with him. If queen d7, I have knight e5, so I think he has to trade queens. It's just forced. Yeah, and he immediately resigned. Let's rematch. Grandmaster Bernaditsky from, is that the Ukraine? Yes, Ukraine. Okay, let's play e6 now. Hmm, and he is intent on gambiting a pawn. I still don't want to take that pawn. I'm leery of your Smith Morris business. Because I don't know what I'm doing in that line. So I'm going to do this and put the bishop on e7. Hmm. Let's play b6. Yikes. This could be painful already, huh? Oh boy. Take knight g5. I think I'm going to get checkmated if I take that. But I'm also going to get checkmated, I think, if I don't take. So let's do this. If knight g5... Hmm. I guess I was going to play g6 there but yeah this is probably going to be painful too g6 uh, <laughs> i'm not going to survive this attack all right just to demonstrate what will happen so he's going to get his queen into h5 very soon the queen is coming like right now or that that's also pretty nifty i can't take the rook because of check and mate to follow yeah rook h8 is coming now can i deal with that I guess I could play this move, but he just takes on f7 now. Or that. Yeah, very nice. Very nice, sir. Yeah, queen h7, mate. So that was um, a good example of how deadly the bishop takes h7 Greek gift is. Got to rethink my opening strategy against this player. Let's play knight f3, move one. His connection seems better now, so I feel good about playing him. Let's go g3, bishop g2. Theoretical line. Put the bishop on b2. Rook here. So if he moves this knight, I might have some ideas of queen takes g7. So he's got to be careful about that. Let's put this rook here. Ah, I could have played bishop takes b7 there. That was my bad. Did not notice it. Let's play h3. I'm going to go queen e3 just put my sights on this pawn. Let's crawl forward with the g-pawn. I think he was trying to get bishop h6 in there. Looks a little tough for him to move. We'll take knight c6. Yeah, why not? Gain the bishop pair. Hmm. Better pull this guy back. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice move. Well played. Go here, attack the bishop in d6. He does He does have um, bishop a3, though, if he wanted there. Can I take that? I think so. Let's try to trap in his rook slightly. Uh, check. 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 Ooh, did he walk into a mating net? e4 coming? Yeah, he walked right into it. He thought he was attacking c6 and f4, but... Yeah, <laughs> that was a nice little trap right there. G5, try to bait him into coming forward, king f5. And e4 is unstoppable. Even if he plays e5, I have that rook uh, covering the e6 square, so it's not going to work for him. Center rematch. Let's play Scandi this time around. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve against the Scandinavian. Play the queen a5 variation. Pretty calm setup. Bishop e2 and castle short. Now he's going to play b5. Sometimes players like to do this. They try to weaken your queen side. Let's put the queen on d7. c3 followed by knight d4 might not be a bad idea, but he's just going to play it like this, okay? It's castle. Try to attack d4. Hmm. Play h6. 
Might be looking for an opportunity for knight a5 hitting the queen and also c4. Let's put b6, therefore. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's a good move. Good move. I think I have to give up a pawn now. It's going to take a7. A pawn or two. Queen takes b6, probably possible. So I'm scrambling in this game. Try to go for some sort of counterplay. Yep, that's a good move as well. Attack the e3 pawn. You can just play rook e1, I think. Any tricks I have here? Not really looking like it. Maybe I can sneak something in. We'll see. Push the h-pawn, push Harry the h-pawn, try to get it up to h2. That would be nice. I don't know what that move did <laughs> to help me. Check. Oh boy. Yeah, you can just queen there. Let's pull this back. He has no time. Okay, I won on time. Undeserved victory, I would say, for sure. I'm going to offer him the rematch. Only 44 moves, so he's playing kind of slow. Solid player. He's tough to beat on the board. He is a grandmaster, after all. Let's play knight a3. Take that. I don't know how to play this setup so well, but I know the gist of it. Hmm, let's take it this way, actually. B7 is under attack. He wants to swap light square bishops. Really? Just let me take here? Okay. So B2 and A3 are both tender. I have to be careful about that. Let's go here. Yeah, and now... Maybe this move, as weird as that looks. Ah, bishop b5. Awful. I was worried about that. b2 and a3 both being loose. I had a feeling that was going to bite me somehow. All right, we're going to try for compensation of some sort. e5, keep pushing these pawns. That's probably my only chance, huh? Ooh. Maybe, maybe I just got something there because he cut off his bishop defending. Really, can you do that? Take. Okay. Queen takes e7 or bishop g2. Okay. All right, let's just take that. I don't know what's going on here, so I'm going to try to take and confuse him. Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm trying to win d8, basically. Don't know if I even want to draw, honestly. Try to go for the win. And he brings his rook back. Next, we're getting this bishop up here. Try to advance this pawn. Don't know why he did that. <laughs> Anticipated that pretty move. I had a feeling he was going to try that. Okay, and checkmate. Got out of another jam right there when I was able to play, what was it, e6? Cutting off the coordination between light square bishop and knight on g4. That was just a stroke of luck. I was asking for it when I didn't sense the danger right here. Or, you know, I sensed the danger, but I didn't know what to do about it after knight c4, queen a6, because... One threat he has here is rook takes b2, queen takes b2. Or no, sorry. Rook takes b2 is not a threat because of knight takes b2, and my queen is defended. But I can't move this knight because if I move the knight, let's say knight e5, he takes on e2, I take with the bishop, and then he takes on b2. So I need some sort of move here to consolidate, but in view of this being possible, I don't like this. This is a, a tricky position in a bullet game for sure. Even with longer time control, it would be tricky. Just offered him a rematch.
Yeah, <laughs> grab the bishop on a pre-move is right. You could just tell by the way he was playing, he was he was trying to stop that A-pawn. So when he played bishop d4, I pre-moved king takes d4. It's about the only way he's going to get back. I mean, maybe he would play bishop d8 as well, but bishop d4 is the more direct way to try to get on that g1 a7 diagonal. That was a wild position when his knight was on f2 as well. Right around here. If he had actually played knight h3, I was going to play king f1 and try to go for the win. Looks like I can get away with that. I was not going to take the perpetual with king h1. Okay, guys, let's try to find one more opponent, and then I'm going to wrap up this stream. I think I'm exactly even on rating or close to it. I've gained maybe, what, four points or something from the start? I think it was 26.75 to start. Putting out a general seek. I hope you guys don't mind that it's taking me forever to get to 2800. I didn't expect it to be easy. Trying to push Harry the H Bond, Arab Assassin. Harry's coming in handy from time to time, yes. <laughs> yeah, we've been going, what, about an hour and a half? Do you prefer bicker, beer or liquor? Bicker. And do you ever enjoy while playing chess? No, I don't, don't ever drink while I play chess, Z Steven. And I like both beer and hard alcohol if I'm having a drink. I don't drink that often, but I drink both. We'll see, positive comment. When Simon's back from his travels, we'll see if we can organize one. Maybe one more before the London Chess Classic sometime this month. Yeah, I do have a pretty good memory, VB. Who is your chess nemesis? Well, I can tell you the player who I do not have good results against, despite our ratings being relatively close. And that's an international master from here in Minnesota. His name is Sean Nagel. And he beats me quite frequently, especially in important tournaments like our state championship. <laughs> it's been that way for a while. I finally broke the curse against him like a couple years ago. I won a game, but overall the record is hugely in his favor. How's it going, Jackson? I know, right, Steiner? <laughs> Stream for quite a while to get to 2800. Do you guys know if there's a certain time of day where there's more likely to be strong players on? This is the evening US time, and I would assume that some Europeans are still awake, like fairly late for Europe. But just at the mercy of uh, who's online at any given moment. And I'm trying to send out individual challenges, but not many people are biting. Okay, how about Akshat Chandra? Maybe he'll play. That would be a cool match. 2784, Akshat Chandra. Talented IM from the US. Young player. Ooh, James Coleman. All right. How's it going, James? I remember you. Let's play a Slav. So take on c4. All right, and he's playing the Geller Gambit. I have a terrible record against this line. Let's try to right the ship at least. We're going to do this and then take here. I'm worried he's going to stab with e6 and make my life miserable. Fortunately, he does not, at least yet. Let's play bishop e7. He can play bishop f3 here if he wants, but I'll go queen d7 in that case and guard the bishop. Now he'll probably castle, if I had to guess. Yeah, he does. 
Mm, I think I'm going to castle now. Sometimes there's an argument for keeping your king in the center, but not in that case. All right, let's get these queenside pawns going. He might get the d6 square, but I get the d5 square for my knight, and I think with the extra pawn here, I must be in good shape, provided I can keep that extra pawn. So let's try our best to do that. Knight f6, not working for him, fortunately. Okay, so let's come in here. Uh, he can take with his knight, though. Yeah, he could have played knight takes b5, I think, in that position. Also, c4 is hanging now. He doesn't have much time, though. Let's pull this back over. Uh, maybe I should have played c3, but I'm just trying to defend my king right now. Don't want to get checkmated when he has 11 seconds left. c3, yeah. Hide the king. Kind of has to play for checkmate now. He has no time. But I'm surviving. This pawn is coming up. Next move. Okay, so we win that game. Got to keep in mind that he plays the Geller Gambit, though. I don't like facing that opening. All right, so now we get a Slav. I'm going to play one of my specialty lines, especially for Bullet. I think this is a good line. Pull the knight back to a2, try to take on c4, and then castle. Simple line to play, and it's not at all bad. Let's go here. If he takes, I'll take with the knight, most likely. So your plan is to play bishop d2, knight c1, and swing this knight around to b3. That's how you want to treat it. Well, I think I can pin him here. This looks mildly annoying. Force him to play rook c8. Now attack b4. He's got a contort to get out of this mess. Let's do this. And he might not be castling. Bishop takes b5, queen takes b5, check. And I guess he can block with his queen, maybe. That's probably the best way of playing it. Anything else looks rough from a king safety perspective. Knight here. Yeah, let's go knight here. I know he can take and double up my pawns. Take. He's taking there. I think I want a pawn out of that. Oh, actually, okay. I get bishop b4 in. Bishop b4, skewer the two rooks. I was trying to figure out how that would translate to a material advantage, and fortunately, it did. I think in that line, black should not play c5 so soon. It's better for them to play bishop e7, make sure they're, they at least have the ability to castle before they go about this c5, c takes d4 plan. c takes d4 should happen later in the middle game, from my experience in this line. Thanks for subbing, Jackson. Appreciate it. Let's look for a new one minute. I think getting to 2700 would be a good goal for this stream. That would make me feel like I've accomplished something. So let's try. Ooh, all right, we got a game with Akshat Chandra. Let's do this. The young fella, all right, he's really tough. I played him in a, uh, what was it? Title Tuesday, maybe, somewhat recently. So he is a tough customer. Knows his theory. You know, typical young player knows what he's doing in the openings. Let's try to castle here. I'm going to play the queen out. Maybe bishop here, if given the chance. This looks all right. Queen d7, I think he can play. Let's go here. I want to get an opportunity for d5. I'd like to play that and then maybe trade queens and win e7. That would be, I think, the best possible scenario. Uh-huh. Can I do that? Looks kind of annoying. Let's just go here. I guess he can play a6, though. I probably can't take, so I think i got to go all the way back. If b5, I think I'll play queen a3 and try to target e7. He's using a lot of time. I do have a small time advantage at this stage. Let's take... And try to attack some. Maybe rook up to c5. I like the fact that I'm controlling the a5 square. I think that helps to some degree. Hmm. I'm going to take here. See if I can get away with it. Queen takes f6 possible. Let's guard that. Ooh, knight e2. Knight e2 he just had. He can still play it, actually. Uh-huh. Oh boy, rook takes f1. <laughs> nice tactic. Nice one, Akshat. 
Yeah, that was... I I saw it the second time, I just didn't do anything about it. Queen takes h5. I couldn't resist taking that pawn, but... I'm, I'm in trouble after this. I'm losing at least a rook. Nice one. Rematch. Okay, but this is a good opponent. I'm glad we're playing. Uh, let's play d5 again. Mm, okay, we'll take on c4. Why not? Let's play this way. Hmm. He assumed I was going to play a different line right there, I think. Let's play e6. Offer a trade of queens. This looks excellent for me already. We'll go here. Now I think he has to play fast because his position is not good. Let's play h6. Maybe he'll try to attack that pawn. Just maybe. Like bishop into c7. But I think I could defend it easily enough. Uh-huh. E4 coming. Ugh, I'm botching this a little bit. Not good. Definitely made a mess of that. Still up a pawn, though. Still every reason to be optimistic. Let's bring the rook into the second rank. Take that. Try to run the b-pawn, basically. Let's not get mated, though. Run the b-pawn. Run fast. I'm attacking e2. Am I going to get it? Am I going to get it? Tough position for him. Let's bring up our king now. He's fast. Oh! <laughs> That's the third rook I blundered in a row. I don't know what to say about that game. That was that was shameful. I apologize to you guys for that game. That was awful. All right, rematch. <laughs> Let's play e4 this time. And he's playing the Scandi, Team Scandi. Akshat wants to join. Okay. Let's see what he's got in this principled variation. Hmm. I'll play d5 against that one. Let's see what he does. Queen takes a7. This is sharp all of a sudden. I think I have to take. So his king is open, but I don't think I want to check him out or anything. Check. He can go to um, d7 pretty easily. So let's try to keep some pieces on board. Yeah, he's looking for a swap now, which makes a lot of sense. But let's maintain the queens. Keep the queens. Mm. Not looking good, though. All right, take. I guess we'll do this. He can play queen a5 now, however. And force a trade. Not great for me. Not great at all. Let's hide our king. Attack g7. Try to throw some stuff at him. Just do our best. Bishop c5. Um, he's got queen d5 in mind next. Yeah, that's resignable. So we lose, lose these first three games. He is over 2,800 now. Beautiful position in the second game for me, which I completely destroyed. Don't know what I'm doing in this line, but we'll play it. Let's take that. Pull this over. Hmm. I'm going to try to go for c5. But maybe I just lose a pawn. Or get a shattered structure, that is. Could be worse. Let's bring this bishop out. D2 is a little weak for him, so maybe I can somehow use that to my advantage. Not if I drop pawns, though. Hmm. Pull this over so I can play B5 if he pushes. Hmm. 
he's making some nice progress with his pawns. I think I'm going to have to put this one on f6 soon. Looking for f5 ideas. Uh, but I can't quite get it in. Mm, that might have been a mistake by him, allowing this. Okay. Ah, uh, check was better. Check on e4, much, much better. Okay, now he's facing mate in two, actually. Check and bishop g6. Well, I stole one game right there. I didn't deserve to win that one, so I'll take it. Let's play e4 again. Doesn't want to scan you this time around. Okay, let's go here. This line, all right, I'm going to play g3, bishop g2. Pretty innocuous variation, but easy-ish to play in bullet. Put the queen here. Look for bishop f4. Or g5, bishop g5 might be good as well. Let's play bishop g5. I feel like he might have some trouble with um, keeping his pawns together in the middle of the board. Maybe not. Now I'm going to go for f4 if I can. He can trade queens, but... Hmm. Let's hide our king. Actually, I don't think I want a queen trade anymore. d6 is weak. No doubt about it. Let's play this. Attack. Can I take here? Or take here, even? No, let's just take. Go here. Knight d5. Yep. Hmm. That probably backfired, whatever I, I did here. <laughs> I opened the position at the wrong time, I think. Almost for sure. Try to attack f7. He's a little low on time. Get this bishop in. Okay, we've got a chance. We've got a chance here. This is not easy for him to consolidate. We'll hide our king next. Because his king is awfully weak is the thing for him. He has a hard time getting his rook over, too. Oh, and we won. Okay. I'll take that one. I think I was mating him there at the end, or close to it as well. All right, let's go. Let's see what we can do here. Take that. Bishop f5. So last time, I think he was he was anticipating knight b6. Is why he played like that. Uh, what do I do here? f6 and then g5. I'm trying to remember my preparation. <laughs> take... Let's go bishop here. Hmm, knight d5. Forgot about that. I hope he doesn't have some tactical knockout right here. I might be barely holding things together. I gotta get my king to safety, ASAP. I know he can play f4 and try to attack. Okay, let's try to trade down. I think that was the most wise thing to do, what I just did there. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Might need my knight back on f8. Check. E2 is loose. I think I can take that. He does have bishop g8, but am I getting mated? I don't know. I don't know that I am. I don't think so. I don't think I'm getting checkmated there. Let's take. Let's do that. Just pin him. That looks annoying. Got to organize some threats here. Oh, that was not good. He can take on f6. Fortunately, he didn't see it.
Ah, one on time again. Okay. So if I can make him think, things are going okay. Big if, if I can make him think. Let's play bishop g5. Get into some knight orf theory. Pull this back. Early h6 is interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that. Let's play queen h3. I'm going to try for e5. I'd like to tee that move up if I could. e5 now. Hope my queen doesn't get into trouble. g4, maybe. g4, queen h4. Trying to calculate what happens there. Okay, let's take that. This is not a good arrangement over here with my queen being so far off sides. His knight is coming into c4. I think I got to trade that off. Don't think I can tolerate that for too long. Hmm. Okay. He's flooding me with these pawns on uh, the king side. He's got some weaknesses, though, like e6 is loose. So maybe I have reason to hope. Queen a8. I'm looking for. Okay, it's not clear. It's not completely clear. Don't think I want to take on e6. Well, actually, I am going to take on e6. I was thinking I might not want to play that way, but it's probably all right. Let's do this. I got to guard against... Oh, he can play rook d1. Rook d1 here is really nice. Yeah, he missed that, but that would have been a nice shot by him. Okay, now it's just a time scramble. Let's see if we can make something happen. Let's go here. Don't think I'll be able to pull this time scramble off. Yeah, he's too fast. And my position is terrible. All right, let's resign that. That's worth highlighting, though. That operation so right here when i played king c1 taking allows king takes b2 i had to do something about rook d1 checkmate so if he would have switched up the move order and done this i have to take and then he takes here i can't stop the pawn i can't get my rook over in a position so it was a nice move he had let's accept that rematch three to four i'm 2693 but we're in the middle of a heated match right now Let's try to get this pawn up to e5. All right, I'm going to push e4. Why not? Let's try to bully him in the center a bit. I'm gladly going to sacrifice that pawn. Because I think that provides some nice long-term play for black with white's pawns being messed up in the center like that. He's trying to advance them as best he can, which makes sense. e4 maybe coming next. Nope. Okay. Let's go after this pawn. Go here, try to attack c2. Really? Okay. Hmm. Let's go here. Threatening knight takes e2. Get this knight back to a stable, a stable square. Looking decent. Let's go here. Attack a2. Let's take that. If he goes h5, I'm just going to take on e4. We're going to keep taking stuff. <laughs> My motto. Can I take here? Take, take, take. I think I can do that. Idea is I have queen d4. It's a nice move to pick up his bishop. I think I should do this first. Check. Take. Uh, h6. Yeah, let's go h6. Looks nice. I'm going to let him take there because I get this over. Yeah, now he's losing. Rook coming to g8. All right, so we hit 2,700, but we got to keep going. He takes. Now we're in a QGA. Take this guy. Hmm, what to do here? All right, I'm going to play this knight around. Bishop here, knight c6 would be a nice trap. I don't think he's going to let me do it. <laughs> be a cool little idea, though. Yeah, he sees it. Let's take like that. 
Uh, let's go d5, push in the center. Take, I think I can take. He can't take here because he gets checkmated. Queen d7, queen takes f7. Hmm, take that, go here. Okay, so his king is in the center, we're up two pawns. He's gonna have a hard time freeing himself. It's a good move. Maybe I get bishop e3 in next move though. And c4 is falling. Yeah, he can't tolerate c4 falling, I don't think. It's gonna be rough on his king safety check. King e8, queen e6. Let's do this first. Probably better. Just go here. Keep the queens on. We don't want to trade. And checkmate. All right, rematch. It's playing the London this time. Mm, let's go bishop g4. Pull this guy back. Queen a4 might be annoying here. Hopefully he doesn't do something like that. Takes, okay. Yeah, he's going to play something like that. I'm going to give him the a pawn. So he'll probably come down and take it. Yep. I feel like I've got some compensation, though. This is not a completely open and shut position, let's say. If we get the rook in, attacking b2. Looks awkward. Get this up. F2 is kind of weak for him. Let's do that. Rook takes F2. Can I do it? Would that be too crazy? I'm not going to risk it. I can't calculate it. Rook takes F2 is an idea, though. Nah, that would not have been good, so good thing I didn't play that. Knight takes F2, also an idea. He doesn't have much time. Probably he should play Rook C1, right? I don't know why he wouldn't. I'll double up if he plays rook c1. Uh, let's go here. Go g5. Open this up. Now we're just rushing his king. Go here. Yeah, his king safety is not a right now. Yeah, he resigned. Okay, so things are going well. Probably hitting about two hours on this stream. So thank you to those who are, have tuned in this whole time. Okay, now we've got a Benoni-like position. I think I'm going to play e5. This seems like a good way of unfurling my play in the center. Let's play bishop f4. Probably dropping a knight in on uh, the e6 square is good at some stage. Got to believe with my center play being so severe that this would be tough for him. Just double up and attack that knight, which is pinned. Yeah, if rook e6, probably queen d3, bishop f8, knight f3, something like that. Uh, let's go here. So I'm trying to get either a rook for two minor pieces. Yeah, knight f3 now. How is he going to defend d d6? Ah, he has that move. He has that one. Okay. Bishop e5. I think that works. Should still win some material. That just drops a piece, right? Okay, so won that game. Thank you for the fire emojis, Lucas. Much appreciated. All right, let's keep going. Let's play bishop c5. It's kind of an older line. Queen g4 is usually the important thing to do against this line if you're white. Mm. Yeah, good idea by him what he just did here. I'm going to go h5 to try to justify what I've played this as. But yeah, this is tricky all of a sudden. h3 is coming. How do I deal with this? Okay, I'm going to sack. I think I kind of have to sack. Okay, let's get this here. I think he's going to castle queenside. So I only have two pawns for the piece, but I do have some secure points in my position, like e5. e5 is very secure. Let's bring this back. Bring this knight up. See if he wants to trade. He does. So now I'm looking for c4. 
takes not gonna work let's withdraw that hmm he's not messing around this game <laughs> he's playing well not messing around at all I'm just trying to maneuver I'm not sure I even want a castle king side at this point looks too risky to do so well now I'm gonna try it because knight d6 otherwise is killer just kind of playing on inertia here but this is not looking promising take here maybe almost working for him very nearly uh okay let's take hmm Yeah, this is going to be over, but just trying my best here. Okay. Yeah, he deserved that one. He played well in the opening there. So mental note, do not play the bishop c5 con against Akshat. Still a close match here. We're going to play this line again. I think this worked out well last time, so let's try it again. I'm trying to get this knight up here. He still probably is going to play bishop e4. Yeah, now take a5, just like he did before. So compared to last time, his king is a lot safer this time around, right? So there should be that going for him. Although, i got to say, I still like my two bishops right here. I'm a fan of those bishops. F2 is a little loose. Probably put the bishop back on g3 to defend that. Rook c1 always coming. Let's play h4, though. Kind of a luft move, almost. Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to keep pushing. Try to counterattack his b-pawn. I think I was practically losing my... That's a good operation by him. Hmm. Yep, good game here by Akshat again. Take that, I guess. He can go after my A-pawn, however. All right, so it's not completely over yet. Let's push this to A6, get this up here. Ah, nice one. Nice one, sir. Guess I'm not losing the piece, luckily for me. Hmm. I don't think he should have done that, what he just did. Wow. I'm going to win now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Unless I mess up huge like that. Checkmate. Got lucky there. He was outplaying me that game, totally. I didn't have a shot till the very end. Okay, let's um, let's play something different this time. He wasn't expecting me to queen. My own stupidity paid off there. <laughs> he was not expecting me to queen. I'm gonna try to win back d4. Hmm. Let's play this. Just try to anchor my pawn on e5. Let's do that. I want to work on e3 if I can. Get something into that square. Guard b7, coordinate for now. Uh-huh. Let's go here. Centralize. Try to get the bishop helping out. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll take take here. Does that work? D3? Nah. I'm not going to risk it. I'm still looking for some sort of breakthrough in the center. Like an E4 type move. E4 would be nice if I could achieve that. You can take on D4, but let's just try it. We're going to open it up. Hard to say who's better here. At E4. Now let's go here. If he checks, I have queen block. Volatile position. 
You're losing the exchange. D2 though. Let's bring the king up. Some king activity. King is waltzing all the way up actually. Pretty far into his position. Goes for c6. Trying to attack some of his weak guys here. Yeah, that was too tough for him with me being the one who was attacking and me having the safer king. Having the safe king and bullet is super important. Okay, knight f3, we're going with this again. Go g3, bishop g2. Mm, let's go fee, double fee and keto. Uh, okay, I'm going to take that and then play c4, I think. Very reasonable position for black, though, already. I don't have an advantage out of the opening. None whatsoever. Hmm. Probably shouldn't have allowed him to do that either. All right, let's take. Try not to lose c4. I'm going to try to go e4, e5 as soon as I can. I think that might be my only way to play this. Yeah, so let's charge. Rook takes b2 ideas. Maybe not working. I think I can play this. This is my only way of creating trouble. Now I take here, which I think he missed. I'm getting lucky with some of these tactics, I'm telling you. Um, I wouldn't expect him to make some of these mistakes ordinarily. Okay, now let's put the bishop here. Mm, okay. i got to work in around the back. I might lose c4 in the process, but... I think I'm playing this correctly. He gets a check in. Check. Ah, queen take. Rook takes d8. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Resign that game. Drop my queen. I think we're both getting a little tired. Let's play bishop f5, slow slav. Pull this back. I'm going to put the bishop on e7, just kind of anticipating him playing e4. Oops, mouse slip there. Oops, a daisy. Oops, a daisy. He offered a draw. Okay. I guess we. Does he have to go? Or did he just feel bad about that? I'm going to ask him. Uh, I think he did that because it was a mouse slip. I thought he had to go or something. <laughs> okay, well, that, that was nice of you, Akshat. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm going to reciprocate if he does some egregious mouse slip at some point. Um, okay, let's play bishop d3 here. I could have declined that draw, but he was already losing so much time that I would have felt bad about playing on and maybe flagging him. So that was kind of a weird situation. Hmm. Let's go knight a4. I want to go e5 here. So let's play that. He can put the knight on d5. But I think with my pawn coming to e6, there must be something to be said for this position. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's just going to win the e5 pawn, I guess, is his point. Yeah, fair point. Okay, let's go here. Attack the rook on a8. This is not pleasant. Queen takes e7. All right, let's try it. b2 is covered, I suppose, so at least I can take that pawn. Uh-oh. <laughs> this could be bad. Take there. Um, rook b8 is coming. Kind of have to take this, but he gets a rook to b8. I'm just slaughtered. Yeah, that's, that's a good attack. Okay, nice game there. Let's play this g6 setup again. Maybe he'll take on f6. He does. Hmm. Let's go here. 
I'm gonna try to transfer my knight over to the king side. Launch this pawn. Try to get some h4 business going. Pressure against e3. Let's put the queen out on an a5. He might want a queen trade, queen a4. He does go for that. Hmm. Guess I'll pull that in. I almost played rook b1 there by mistake. <laughs> that was a very near mouse slip. Not like I need... Whoa. I think he... Okay. I'm going to offer him a draw because that was a clear mistake right there by him. All right. So now we're even. Let's rematch. He thought I was going to play pawn d5, or he might have stri slipped. He said, I wanted to pre-move knight takes d5, but it registered for d takes c5 as well. Okay, well, everyone's happy. Let's go into a Sicilian again. So this is a classical Sicilian rouser. I think I played bishop c4 here. Been ages since I played this line. Pull the bishop back. Play king b1, always useful. Hmm, you know, f3. Don't think I have an advantage, though. And I feel like I've been saying that a lot. Therefore, I'm going to go for a queen trade. Simply because I don't see me doing well with the queens on the board. Let's go here. Uh, I guess I'll take. You can take with this knight, though. Or that. I was hoping he would take it with his knight so I could trade and then maybe go for uh, some sort of idea involving knight d7. Okay, so let's take. Let's do that. He's still pinned up here. I feel like I don't have to take on f6 until I want to. Let's bring the rook over. Yeah, he's got to waste time getting out of that pin. Let's check now. Try to go for some endgame advantage. He can check and play rook d2, though. This is going to get weird. So I've got this B pawn that could be dangerous, but his rook needs to get back in a position to try to stop me. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I don't know that I should have done that, what I just did there. But I got my B pawn, don't I? Still has to waste a lot of time. Yeah, queening. Okay, I'm going to get this. Oh, I lost on time. Wow, I played that really slow, didn't I? He was just playing really fast. Okay. <laughs> Mental note. Play quicker. Hmm, B4 this time. Let's put this on C6 again. Now I'll play A5. Try to get the better pawn structure. Maybe try for e5. e5, e4. Get that out of the way. We'll take. Get this knight up. Rook d8. Hmm. <laughs> I think knight d4. Messy position. I'm attacking e5. I want to get the e3 square. Like so. He's going to sack. Can I take here? Yeah, let's take that one first. So he's going to take d8 is his point. But first he has to figure out where to put his queen. Okay, so let's do that. Try to win a5. I realize he can maybe take b7 at some stage. Uh-huh. Let's play rook a2. That looks like a good move to start. He maybe should swap queens. Yeah, like he's doing right here. I'm going to take and then do that. And pull this over. Whereupon I think we have a pretty equal position. Unless he wants to play for a win. Which he might. Let's 
I don't know that he should have done that, actually. Yeah, now he's probably losing. Check and then take this guy. As long as I don't botch this. Oh man, another rook dropped. Another one. Free move. Oh, I won on time. <laughs> I thought with like the fourth consecutive rook drop, that was gonna be bad. All right, let's keep going. I switched it up there, played a different move, caught him by surprise. Let's pull this back. Queen a4 is now a threat, as is taking on c4. We can take there, because we're going to get it right back. Queen a4 check and then take. Hmm. Let's go here. Just try to make it difficult for him to castle, quite simply. Make it a bit of a pain for him. Mm, yeah, structurally that was not a good decision by me though. Probably compounding the problem now. F3, give the pawn back. Hmm. Do not like this knight over here. Let's do that. Do not like my knight over on h4 one bit. So I'm going to take the opportunity to get back in the game. Hmm. Let's go h4. Still a fight here. I think almost anything can happen in this game yet. Let's go here. See if he wants to swap. He does not. Not yet, at least. Yeah, that's a good idea by him. No. Okay. <laughs> After this game, I'm going to tell him two more. Because I'm about at the end of my session, I think. Let's take that pawn. Get into some more theory. I'll try to play it better this time around. So f6, castles, g5. We already had this. Let's take... I'm going to try bishop g6 this time. Let's go here. Thing is, even against this, it's kind of tough to get your king to safety, right? All right, let's go here. Just worried about him planting a knight on f5, which looks very strong. Yeah, attacking f6. Ooh. All right, I'm going to castle. Give up f6, but I didn't see a better way to play that. Rook d2 could be an idea in the future. Keep that in mind. I'm trying to pin him up here. Akshad is very close to Grandmaster, by the way. I think he's got two norms. Flirting with 2,500 feet A. He's like right there. Okay, let's hide the king first of all. Hmm. Can't do that. Let's go here. I'm way up on time at this point. But my position is not so good. Ah, there's queen e5 ideas. Yeah. Gotta hope for the best. Oh, bishop c5 would have been better there. All right, let's go here. Oh, queen takes b7 he had just a moment ago. We're winning his knight. Almost.
Oh, won that on time. All right. So I'm just letting them know in the chat. It's a good thing to do if you're playing a match with someone, just to let them know if you have to go soon or not. He said, okay. All right, let's go back to E4. Let's play a King's Indian attack. Put the bishop on G2 and castle. Hmm, okay, H4. Swing this knight around. Get this here. Uh, let's play at bishop d2. Hmm. Let's go a4. Just try to stymie some of his play on that wing for now. I got to admit, though, my position is not looking great here. I might have to sacrifice on g5 to make something of this. Hmm. Mm, play this move first. Not liking it. <laughs> not liking it at all. He's flipped the script on me. He's the one attacking on this wing. On the king side. So I gotta try to distract him somehow. Like offer a queen trade as I'm doing right here. Let's go here. Alright, so I'm not gonna get mated at least for now. Let's pull this back. So now he's just gonna try to get his queen over to the... Uh, eighth rank. I'm attacking b7. It's not so clear yet. Let's go f3. Let's see if we can bust our way out of this. Yeah, he pulls his light square bishop back. Probably a good idea. Not sure I timed f3 correctly there. Let's go here. And keep that. Okay, finally we're breaking through. Finally we're getting something going. Rook takes d7 being a big threat. At long last, rook f7 mate. Okay, won that game. And last one. It's London system. Put the bishop out on f5. He might take here and try to hold on to the pawn, but he decides not to. Let's play queen b6. I didn't like what happened with that queen a4 variation earlier on, so maybe I can, yeah, try to get a queen trade or something. Make this a little easier to play. Let's go here. If knight a5, I think c5 is good. Okay, let's do this, and then knight e4. And how does he defend that pawn? Maybe b4, but then he would lose c3. I could even take on Bassan, but... Okay. Let's go f6. I don't mind this trade. If he trades and then puts the bishop in on d6, that pawn is also a goner. Let's take here. Let's go here. Put the knight there. Now we're going to keep our king in the center for the time being. Put the king on e6. Let's do that. Keep these pawns firmly where they're at. Go a5. Firmly situated. Hmm. I want to win b4. Let's do that. And now we got a really nice pawn chain. Yeah, he can't really fight against that. Probably he'll take on c3. Nope. Just clean that pawn. And checkmate. Okay. So we finish on a positive note. Yeah. Long match. 14 to 10. Just tell him thanks. He said, 10 and 14 is a good result for me. Yeah, Akshat is being modest. He's a stronger player than I am, and I have no doubt he will make Grandmaster very soon. So that was a fun match. In the beginning of the match, I got down. I think I lost the first three games, right? I was making some errors. But then I think I dialed in nicely. 
and pumped up the rating. All right, so this, this stream was not wasted as far as the road to 2800. So managed to get up to 2742. We'll take it. Fire emojis all in the chat. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Curry M, Diogo, Vic. This game felt good. I think the key idea was after knight c5 that I traded on c5 and played knight e4. So then I've got knight takes c5 in mind. He doesn't have a good way to counter that. He can't defend the pawn. Because if ever he supports it with b4, he does lose c3, as I was demonstrating. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. This stream went longer than I anticipated, but I don't... I don't think um, I'll have a set schedule in mind for this type of stream, the road to 2800, because it, it all depends on what opponents I'm getting. You can see that it was very slow at the beginning, and then this last hour or so it picked up nicely. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'll do another one of these very soon, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.